happenings, global happenings today. We communicate. We analyze global news. Stay tuned. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to Global Happenings Today YouTube channel. Peter Hobby have made up his mind that he's definitely going to be giving Bola Metunubu water, water in governance if he doesn't do the right thing. Remember, he did answer. He did say that um, uh, he should be in the Guinness Book of Record. That's Tunubu. But guess how the whole thing has gone by. Let's find out really what Peter Hobby is saying right now that he's causing Nigerians obedient Batified and the rest are talking everywhere on social media and you you be the judge is peter will be right in saying what he's saying is he saying it the way it is let's find out well before we do that kindly subscribe to our channel now tunubu had recently bragged that he deserved to be included in the guinness world record over his performances in the country since he assumed leadership and the presidential candidate of the Labour Party and the former Anambra state governor, Peter Obi, has stated that President Bola Tunibu should be actually in the Guinness World Records for causing Nigerians the most hardship untold hardship. <laughs> Now, Obi added that he had put the 2023 general elections behind him already and he was now focusing on governance and real issues. Well done. Now, speaking in an interview, he noted that Nigerians on the street could judge the performance of Tinubu so far since May 2023. Recall that Tinubu had recently bragged that he deserves uh, to, be in, to be included in the Guinness World Record over his performances in the country since he assumed leadership. Reacting, Peter Obi said he may actually be correct when he claims that he, his name deserves to be in the Guinness World Records. Don't forget that people's names don't always make it into the Guinness World Records for only ultra sick uh, reasons. So it depends on which angle he's coming from. If the idea is to put his name in the Guinness Book of Records for causing Nigerians the most hardship, untold hardship, of course, he's spot on. And I would totally agree with him because his reforms are not achieving what they are meant to achieve. Well, for me, the biggest lesson from the 2023 general elections is the fact that Nigerians are actually committed to good governance. They are not as complacent as people thought they were because they, especially the youth, were actually committed to doing the right thing. That is why they came out in their numbers to participate in the elections. The second lesson is the realization that the leaders, most people in the elite class, are not actually interested in good governance because you can classify the electoral umpire as part of the elite class, the government. All of us are not prepared to do the right thing because if the elites are prepared to do the right thing, the result or the outcome of the election would have been different. But for me, the election have come and gone. And I don't want to talk about the issue of the 2023 elections. What I am talking about now are issues of governance because the average Nigeria today is talking about the Nigeria of today and the Nigeria of tomorrow. That is what is important. Now, speaking on how he rates the government so far, he said, and I quote him, word for word. That is really a question for the generality of Nigerians to answer. Ask the average Nigerian how he's faring today. The truth is that we have, we have many more Nigerians thrown into poverty. Millions of Nigerians don't know where the next meal will come from. Nobody is sure what the price of a cup of rice, gari, or a loaf of bread will be tomorrow. So, it is, it is Nigerians that you should ask that question. It is not a question of, for me to answer. It is so, it's not something I, I alone will tell you. Ask Nigerians. The masses out there on the streets of Nigeria, and you will get a feel of what they are going through. But I know that the situation is critical, very critical. Now, this is coming from Peter Obi. Eh, you know, if you have forgotten, there was a time when Bola Metinu said, uh, my name should be included in the Guinness Book of Record. Uh, people were like, uh, how now? Why should they put your name in the book? What did you do? Because I removed the subsidy that nobody had the mind to. And, you know, in a comical way, Jovia Mana, most people who were in the conference uh, hall press release when he made that statement, they all had a hearty laugh. But Peter will be seeing it differently. Well, Nigerians do make a way into the Guinness Book of Record. People make their way into the Guinness Book of Record for doing something that is not common, in fact, very uncommon. And they saying the level of hardship in the country 
It's amazing. My colleague is in the house. What's her take? And the fact that Peter is getting really, this time around, is getting very direct. You know, all that before, uh, Peter B will always start with my respected elder brother. There's nothing respected in this one now. But boy, is hitting it in bus goes. What's your take, please? Well, um, <clears throat> when he finally accepted the uh, um, the Supreme Court verdict on the election petition, presidential election petition, he openly told Nigerians that he was going to be full-time opposition. And I think that's exactly what he is doing. And I, I think I'm, I'm cool with that because it's a way of uh, streamlining the government and also letting them know that Nigerians are watching. Even those who had voted for that office also are looking for that office. Now, talking about the issue of uh, him being included in the uh, Guinness, Guinness World Book of Record as the worst performing president, kind of the one who had thrown Nigeria into so much suffering. I, I, I feel that um, this is one of the reasons why we need a younger president, one who have the privilege of going through his phone. Hold on. What do you mean by younger president? Are you referring to the likes of Yahya Bailey? Because that's a young nah, governor. Nah, those ones have sledgehammer. They will, they will release <laughs> on Nigerians. That, that's not... I'm talking about someone with a good heart, especially someone at the age range of uh, um, Peter Obi and who, had, who has at least a track record of high performance when it comes to governance. That's the kind of person I'm referring to. So I, I feel that if such a person comes on board, he will be seeing his phone. And at least he will have a Twitter handle, even though he has media aids and all of that. But at least he will, in his spare time, be going through his Twitter to see, or let me say YouTube, yeah. social media as a whole, be going through and be seeing what people are saying, what Nigerians are going through, the events that are daily unfolding. He will have that time of at least having, call it a town hall meeting. Um, online town hall meeting so when Nigerians will call in to tell them his plight because I think that right now why Tinibu is getting very excited is because he feels that from the feeders I've been getting from my people mm -hmm. I'm performing you know and you notice something very uh, interesting about him he doesn't hold back money you hear him dishing out money. Sometimes I ask, why is he just giving out money to people? For example, I heard about re giving out money to, I think, five northern states, about 50 billion naira mm. to them because of insecurity. Oh, yes. Proper investigation has not been carried out for you to know what are the remote causes of this. thing, And you're just releasing money to the state government to use it and do what? They don't even understand how to solve this problem and you're releasing money just anyhow. Now, this is why we need a younger person and I feel this is very important. One more question, and we'll wrap this up. Do you think that Peter Obi is dragging Bola Matinibu simply because he lost? And um, do you think he has truly moved on, or just saying he has moved on, but actually he's, um, he has not moved on, his eyes still on the presidency? I feel that his eyes is still on the presidency. Now, for someone who is uh, who have the capacity, who has the capacity to fix the country, right now he is jogging by the side of the field, getting ready if such an opportunity presents itself again. What I would do if this kind of circumstance situation, he's just sitting by and watching. It's like you're watching uh, to see the performance of this person so that when I get in there, I will know what to do per time. I, I can assure you or I can say, being who he is, who knows, he may be writing out a lot of things if I'm given opportunity when Nigeria is facing this kind of situation. What should I do? Some of those situations, he will pick it up, try it in other nations. What have been the solution to issues like this? Go into history to check when this country was passing through history insecurity, what were they able to do? So I, I think that his eyes is still on the ball. He believes that he has the capacity to fix Nigeria and he will do it better. Being now that at least someone is ahead of him and is performing and is seeing the loophole. Let me, you know, be checking out the mistakes he's making. So there's no way his eyes is not focused on that. Objectively now, mm -hmm. your candid opinion. Do you think come to the 27 and Peter is in the ballot, Nigeria will still come out and mass to vote for him the way they did the last time? Well, I don't think that will be possible because uh, if not for anything, Ibu's 
especially those in Lagos, will never try it again. They they know what they have suffered because of that. Yeah, somebody will say there were good reasons why they did all those demolition and all of that. But we all know it points to wonder because we knew what happened, you know, during the period of voting, what some of them went through. Some of them went through very terrible moments, you know, for Peter Obi. And being that, uh, you know, Peter Obi seems not to have the capacity to build enough bridges around. He's trying his best, but then this corrupt organization do not see him as the best for that position. I don't see him um, securing that position. I don't, I don't even see any, um, those major political party flaunting him because right now, one of the most important, uh, um, uh, political tool they will use against him is to frustrate him. They are going to make sure that any party he wants to go and, you know, get, uh, get okay. uh, their ticket, they will sponsor somebody to frustrate him. And that person will have to wreck that party just to make sure that he doesn't come out. So it's going to be very, very tough. Already we know that Labour Party, the reason why we're hearing a lot of quietness right now, is because, um, you know, Bola Bentinibu has one and all of that. But I assure you that immediately 2027 come, so many issues will come. I don't even think that Labour Party will still be in existence again by the time that, uh, because some of them too want to, you know, get so a chunk of money from this government. They know that, I mean, the possibility of us being brought in is not there. So, Oga, are you ready to use me to scatter this party? I am ready. After all, they made use of some other guys, you know, and it and, and, and works. So, they, are you ready? They're, they're happier now. Man, so are you ready to use me? Let's scatter this party. Wherever Peter Obi goes, they will send someone, a strong antagonist against him. And that person's purpose is to make sure he frustrates his political move, except he uh, come to a point of uh, uh, acceptance with Atiku Abubakar in PDP. <laughs> but for him to come on board and rule, man, corruption will stop now. <laughs> As I always say, every Nigerian has seed of corruption in him, and it's very small. So, uh, we don't want such a person right now. Everybody don't blow finish now. I won't tell you the come to tell me story, say no corruption. They don't want such a person. So, Peter will be, I don't know, except it is factored into the will of God. But then, even from, you know, the religious side of it, we've heard what some prophets are saying, that even if he wants to carry out 85 prophets to prophesy on him, that he will not get into that position. I don't know the reason, but already it's visible that it won't happen. All right, we could go on and on. That's we're going to wrap it up. Let's meet in our comment session. Also, take have a nice time. God bless you. Let's interact. Do you think Peter B have a great chance to come back again in 2027?